welcome to Rule Breaker. Today we're going to take a look at how you, you play as the Nalu Collective in Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. So these weird kind of uh, snake mermaid monster things, um, they their main thing is that they always go first. They always like to take their actions at the start of the round. Um, this is a thing that you're going to want in the end game and as the Nalu you're going to be able to do that. Uh, something I found amusing on the um, their statistics here was that their dispedition is seductive. Uh, yeah, sure, okay. Um, let's see what you start with at the beginning of the game. So um, down here you'll see your starting technology. You've got Neural Motivator one of the green techs, and Sarween Tools, one of the yellow techs. Now, in my opinion, these are two of the best um, early technologies in the game. Neural Motivator reads, during the status phase, draw two action cards instead of one. So more action cards is always good, that's really fun. Um, and Sarween Tools, when one or more of your units use production, reduce the combined cost of the produced units by one. So an always one discount whenever you build stuff, basically, which is really, really good. So already off to a pretty good start with the technologies. Um, the starting units, you've got quite a diverse mix of starting units here. You start with one carrier, which is for carrying uh, troops around, um, a cruiser, which is this fast ship for moving really far away, a destroyer, which is mainly used to destroy fighters and fly really far, um, three fighters, which are these little dudes who tend to soak up damage, four infantry, that's quite a lot as well, for conquering planets, um, your space dock and a PDS. So quite a lot of units at the start of the game as well. And this is the start system for the Nalu. It's uh, got two planets here, Maluk and Drua. Um, one of these is a zero resources, two influence planet, and the other is a three resources and one influence planet. Um, you're gonna have to probably put your space dock down here on Drua, otherwise you're only gonna be producing two units. The way space dock works is, um, the space dock is worth two, and it's added to the resources amount, making five. So from Drua, you'll be able to build five units at any one time. Um, your PDS from the start of the game, you can put it on either planet or move it around. You've got a bunch of fighters, you've got a destroyer, you've got a cruiser, you've got a carrier, and you've got four infantry, making a very full start system, at least in pieces of plastic. Um, higher than most other races, actually. In unit amount. You're also going to take this um, Nalu token which on one side has the number zero and the other side has their um, symbol. We'll explain that a little bit later on. As start systems go that's a combined um, amount of three and three which is pretty good. Um, a total of six not bad. Having it split across two cards is probably good as well. Um, setting you up for a decent start especially with these two really good technologies at the start of the game. All right, so here's the Nalu's um, race sheet, the front of it now. Um, let's take a look at it here. Um, they have almost the, the exact same uh, resources, except for the uh, fighters. The fighters are a little different. They're called Hybrid Crystal Fighter 1 instead of Fighter 1. Let's just compare the two of those there. So um, this is a standard one I'm using the Embers of Muat's um, race sheet just to compare them. Um, the standard Fighter 1 is a 1 cost for 2 units, which is the same for the hybrid crystal fighters here. But um, th the big difference here being that um, the Nalu fighters can hit on 8s instead of needing to hit on a 9, making them that little bit stronger in uh, combat, which is nice. Um, the rest of the units are pretty much the same. Okay, let's take a look at the Nalu special abilities. Um, the first one is telepathic. So it says, at the end of the strategy phase, place the Nalu zero token on your strategy card. You are first in initiative order. So that's this guy here, this token. Um, it has a zero on one side. Um, that's what that's for. Let's take a look at how that would work um, if it played out. So here are the strategy cards. Normally, if you want to go first, particularly at the end of the game, when there's a chase to 10 points, you're probably going to want to take leadership to go first, um, ignoring all of the cool abilities that come along after that, like technology or imperial or warfare or diplomacy or, or anything. Um, as the Nalu, you don't have to worry so much about the numbers on these because even if you took, say, imperial as your one, you're going to put that zero on top of it, meaning you go first, which is great. Uh, the other main ability here is foresight. 
After another player moves ships into a system that contains one or more of your ships, you may place one token from your strategy pool, which is these guys here, um, in an adjacent system that does not contain another player's ships. Move your ships from the active system into that system. So let's just take a quick look at that on the board. All right, so let's say that you are the yellow player here as the Nalu, and your opponent has these two big scary dreadnoughts, and they activate this system and fly in. At this point, and only at this point, um, can you take one of your strategy tokens from your strategy allocation, um, place it in an adjacent system, and then you immediately move out of there. Um, you can move into um, the asteroid field, I wanted to show that here, but only if you have the technology that allows you to move there. Um, the standard thing is to move into a, a system that has uh, no enemy ships at all in it. So if you happen to have anti-mass deflectors, you would have been able to activate the asteroid field here and move in. That would have been fine. And the Nali player also has three commodities, which is pretty standard stuff. Um, during the trade phase, you can choose to fill up your uh, commodities. Um, that would make you um, able to trade these away for trade goods with other players. Um, three is not a huge amount, but it's not bad. Um, you're probably going to want to make friends in this game as the Nalu, so trading is, is important. Um, so try and take advantage of that. The Nalu have a pretty cool flagship called Matriarch. It's this big, big unit here. Um, it has a cost of 8. It rolls 2 dice and hits on a 9, which is not super. Um, it has a move of 1 and a capacity of 6. It also has sustained damage, meaning that it can take a hit and be placed upside down like this. Um, and then keep fighting um, and at the end of the round it would flip back over as normal um, however it does have this really cool ability um, which is during an invasion in the system you may commit fighters to planets as if they were ground forces after combat return those units to the space area let's take a look at this on the board okay so let's say you are the value player in yellow and you're attacking a planet controlled by the blue player um, you activate the system, you move in. If there had been ships, it would have been space combat as normal. But in the example here, we'll just skip that and go straight to the example here. So the flagship is carrying with it a single infantry unit and five fighters. Um, so during ground combat, these fighters can act as if they were uh, infantry. So let's say that you fight on and fight on, you lose a couple of fighters uh, but you kill all of the opponent's infantry you can then land on the planet now landing on the planet still requires an infantry still need to have this guy okay um, because at the end of combat um, specifically says on the matriarch here that um, after combat return those units to the space area so the fighters will return to the space area which means that they're on the ship not on the planet so if you didn't have this infantry with you you wouldn't actually take control of the planet itself so be aware of that you're going to probably need to take some infantry along with you anyway other than that though the fighters take part in the ground combat using their own ability um, which in the case of the Nalu's fighters they actually have uh, combat of eight just like the infantry which is pretty cool just remember that they do return to space after the fight and to have a guy extra in order to conquer the planet that you're trying to take over um, the Nalu have two racial techs just like everybody else in this game um, the first one is the Neuroglave and the second is hybrid crystal fighter 2 uh, sounds like a Capcom fighting game. Um, Neuroglave it requires three green technology prereqs, meaning it's going to be a bit later in the game before you do this. Um, it has the text, after another player activates a system that contains one or more of your ships, that player removes one token from his fleet pool and returns it to his reinforcements. So you, oh wow, you are very standoffish with this ability. I think it's really, really powerful. Go for this one if you can. Reducing somebody's fleet pool means that the number of ships they can have in a fleet is reduced by one. So if they've got a fleet capacity of, say, three, um, you remove one, they're only going to have a fleet capacity of two. So they're only going to be able to have two ships uh, in the combat. Uh, it's pretty devastating. A very, very defensive and very standoffish ability. 
Um, their other one, Hybrid Crystal Fighter 2 Turbo Remix, um, is uh, an upgrade to the fighters. So let's compare it to the to the standard fighters. All right, so their standard fighters down here, um, they're they're basically just uh, eight combat, and and that's their thing. Um, the Hybrid Crystal Fighter 2. Instead of it being combat 8, it's combat 7, making them even better. But they also have a move of 2. Now, that is quite quite unusual for fighters to have their own move. Um, and that's because of their text, which reads, This unit may move without being transported. Each fighter in excess of your ship's capacity counts as half of a ship against your fleet pool. So these guys can move around on their own. They don't need to be accompanied by a carrier or... Um, be accompanied uh, at a space dock or anything like that. They can move around on their own and every two fighters counts as one fleet capacity. So you can have uh, a fleet of a single fighter flying around, meaning that you can spread your units really, really far with the Nalu, making them pretty powerful. Combined with the Neuroglave, <laughs> You're uh, going to be reducing other people's fleet capacity with even just one fighter. And that's the main combo that you're probably going to try and do as the Nalu to be as absolutely standoffishly defensive as possible. The Nalu have their own racial promissory note as well that you can give to other players. Theirs is the Gift of Prescience. Um, at the end of the strategy phase, place this card face up in your play area and place the Nalu Zero token, that's this guy, on your strategy card. You are first in initiative order. The Nalu player cannot use his telepathic faction ability during this game round. That's the one where you use this token. Um, return this card to the Nalu player at the end of the status phase. So you can give somebody the ability to go first. That's what this is. Um, yeah, at the end of the game, this is amazing. For the other player, so yeah, I don't know. Um, I feel like this is a very, very risky promissory note to give out. It could be the difference between somebody putting this down at the end of the game and sneaking to 10 points before you. So, if you're going to give this out, make sure you're getting something very, very, very powerful indeed um, in return because it's game changingly strong. And that's basically Nalu. Um, this zero token here is really, really good, especially at the end of the game, as I've mentioned before. Um, the combination of the hybrid Crystal Fighter 2 and the Neuroglave technology um, are pretty amazing as well. M being so standoffish that people are afraid they're going to lose fleet capacity, meaning they'll have to sacrifice their own ships. That's that's what you want to do as the Nalu. You want to be standoffish, you want to control Mechatol Rex probably um, quite early meaning that people don't want to attack it, which means you can soak up the points from Imperial. Um, I really like this race. I think they're one of the more um, unique and interesting ones to, to play as. Um, they definitely have a unique playstyle. Having fleets of fighters on their own is fascinating and really powerful. Um, and I think that if you're lucky enough to get these guys, you're going to have a very interesting game of Twilight Imperium 4. So with that, we'll leave it there. If you have any comments, do throw them down there and I'll answer them as soon as possible. Um, I hope you got a lot out of this video and do check out the rest of the series. Um, coverage of Twilight Premium 4 is going to be pretty extensive. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. This has been Rulebreaker. I'll see you again.